Hello again, this is UML Operator. All right, and welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna kick off the scripting series. Now, this is going out a little bit early, but we had a lot of requests and I wanna get something out to get it started, get you started. And when by the time we finish the Model Driven Anything series, we'll roll into this one in more detail. So why use automated scripts? Well, there's a lot of mundane stuff, repeatable and defined things that we have to do when we're delivering projects. And we want to save time and money and increase the time to market as well as the performance. So there's lots of reasons we're going to talk about in this session for doing this, from creating package structures to class elements, defined class elements, including uh, tag values and other intelligence that you want to rapidly deploy in your model. So let's get started. First off, a special thanks to JohnCon174 for requesting this subject. And I know many of you have requested this subject in the past, but I think it's a good time to start it. We're not going to get into the series yet. We're just doing this early because of the multiple requests that I've received to get into scripting. So we're just going to touch on it today. And then by the time we get to the end of, again, the Model Driven Anything series, we will start the scripting series for Sparks Enterprise Architect. Now today I'm gonna to focus on VB scripting, although JavaScript is more common and very easy to do in Sparks, but most of the scripts that I will build for clients would be in VB script because a lot of people started in Visual Basic when they started programming before they moved into Java and C Sharp and other things. So VB script, there's a lot of great examples and a little less bugs. I, you know, over the last several versions of Sparks, JavaScript has gotten much better and the libraries have gotten better. So I'll let you choose which one you want to do. Today, we're going to focus on VB scripting. And I do want to reiterate the disclaimer for UML operator channel. And that's that we do not teach coding. In this channel, we teach modeling. However, to talk about scripting and automation, we have to do a little bit of coding. So I just wanted to give that detail and we'll move forward from there and give, you know, post your questions in the comments section. Maybe others can jump in and help or we'll take the time to support you. Now I'll put these links down below in the description, but a good video to watch, I know that it's 2015, maybe a little outdated, is the introduction to scripting using Enterprise Architect. So I'll put the links down in the description as we're moving forward. Now many of you have complained in the channel about Sparks Help Center and being able to find the content that you're looking for. And I just wanted to give a quick tip. Right, so you might come across an old URL for a subject area and you're on a new version of Sparks and you're going, hey, this doesn't align with my version of Sparks, the tabs, the groups, what have you. Notice that this is for version 12. And if you change this to 16 or whatever version you have, I'm on 16.1 and hit enter, you get the version that is applicable to the version of Sparks that you have. So all the subject content that's in here. And if you do that for any other links that are not for 16.1 or the version that you're on, just go ahead and change that. And we're gonna be going through this subject. And now I'll include these links in the description below as well for some homework material that you're gonna to wanna to need and get to. Let's look at some sample scripts that Sparks has provided. Let's create a new project. So create a new project and we're going to do it in our learning folder. And we're simply going to call it scripting, right? So let's open it and you can see that we, there's nothing here. There is no scripts. This is all the canned scripts and we're going to take you to this. So you know how to get to the scripting window in just a moment. So this is a completely blank project. So I'm in the default layout right now for those of you that are just getting started. We're going to go to execute 
and we're going to select script library from the source code. And in this workspace layout, scripting is down at the bottom, and I like to have it on the lower right. There's other ways to get to it, but that's the fastest and easiest. What I'm going to do is go back to my common layout where I normally work. And in this particular case, scripting is in the lower right, like I said, and I work from here. So this is completely blank. There are only canned scripts from Sparks that are in here. Let's look at the first one. So we go to local scripts. Let's JavaScript right here, JScript. Scroll down. Let's look at a sample script. Dictionary example written in VB script. Let's double click and open that up. If we roll up and look at the same script written in JavaScript, all the way up here, JavaScript dictionary example. Here you can see the structure and the code for the exact same thing, right? So let's go ahead and run the JavaScript one. So we can right click on it, run script, and it goes to the system output. That's what it's programmed to do is to print out to session output. And you can see that it dumps the dictionary, this is not the glossary, that's currently in this default right here, all right? Now it added some things right here. You can see it added these items that are right here, and there they are. To prove a point, we're gonna go back to scripting. We're gonna roll back down to VB script for the same thing, and that was for glossary. Here we go. We're gonna run this one, run the script. And there goes the output VB script example, same thing as the JavaScript example, right? So let's talk about the structure of these scripts. So when you're writing VB scripts, you start with the option explicit statement. In some cases you don't have to, but I normally do. And then you have your include directive right here. This is bringing in this library for VB script. When we look at JavaScript, you do not have the same statement opening up and you do not require the libraries, the, you know, the include directive in here. But I want to close this one and we're going to focus only on VB script. Now it's always good programming best practices to put documentation in your code. And you can see that documentation throughout this code. So great job, Sparks, right? The next thing we see is the subroutine. This is the main routine that is going to run when it is triggered through the code set. And then it gets all the way down at the bottom. And then you have an end the sub and the subroutine, right? Now, the one thing about Sparks that may be different than other VP scripting is that you should close the last line should be the same name as the subroutine. So dictionary example down here, dictionary example. That's all you have to do. Otherwise your code won't work in most cases. So it's just a good practice to do that when you're doing VB scripting. In later sessions, we're going to show the difference between a subroutine and a function, but a, a subroutine is a block of code that performs a specific task, but does not return a value. You know, it's similar to a function, but unlike a function, the subroutine cannot return a value directly to the calling code. The subroutine is a procedure that performs the tasks that do not return a value. And it's typically used when you want to execute a series of statements, which you see here, don't need to return any results. While a function is similar to subroutine, it returns a value. And you might have a subroutine that runs and then you execute a function, maybe it's to execute a SQL connection to go out to a database and grab in, you know, data and bring that in to your result sets. So let's go back to the scripting window. Let's close this one, minimize it. And these are all groups and you can see each one of them has an icon next to the folder. Let's create a group, all right? Now you have normal groups, project browser group, you have diagram group, et cetera. So there are seven that you see here that you can select and always hit help if you need to. There's actually 11, but we're just gonna focus on the seven that they've provided us. So let's just create a 
browser group. This is normally what I start with, and I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. You can see that it just says new group. I did not name it, and it has a different icon. If I right click on this, group properties, I left click on it, I get a dialog box where I can name it. And let's just call it one normal group, right? Just give it a name. And you can always come through here and change the group type, all right? But we're gonna leave it at Project Browser. Then it's always good practices to describe your group, all right? What are you doing? What's the group for? What does it do? And then bullet point out the scripts that you've written or plan to write within, this, within these notes, all right? So there we go, we've renamed this group to norm, one normal group. So why are scripts important and when do you, should you actually invest time into them? Number one to me is to save labor costs. It's to take patterns, repeatable and defined patterns, write scripts to help automate work when you're doing model. This can help with number two to me, and that's faster time to market. Now, while I'm saying to me, if you're working with governance, policy writers, rules writers for processes and practices, they're gonna tell you that's the number one most important thing, right? That's to be able to adhere to process and practice objectives, and there's certainly much more, but the number one reason for me is just to speed up my modeling, the tasks that I need to do, and get them out the door as fast as possible. Be very careful when naming your groups and naming your scripts, all right? So let's look at Sparks and their best practices, right? You can see these are very simple, unique names, right? JavaScript dictionary example. There's another dictionary example, but it has a unique name, and that's VB script dash dictionary example, all right? So these are great practices. I suggest never put versioning in your script name, all right, very important, but make sure you have unique, concise, short, meaningful script names because you are going to get a lot of them and you they're gonna be from different groups maybe and you want your the people that are using these scripts to be able to get to them very quickly when they need them. For example, we named our a group one, the number one, and then we gave it a unique name. And then if you right click here, you're able to add new scripts, all right? So we're gonna add a VB script. Now typically what I will do is I will put one as the first script in normal group, and then I will give it a unique name like class with tags, right? or build class with tags, but you wanna keep it as short as possible, right? So something like that, let's go ahead and open it. So here, Sparks automatically gives you a template to work from, right? So we've got our option explicit statement, we've got our include directive, you have a subroutine, and then you have the logic. And then what's cool what they do here, which I don't do enough of, is when I'm doing my design, I do, I set up patterns that we've already written and then I'll code them out, right? I'll note them out. So to comment them out, they even tell you what's the fastest way to do that, control shift and C. So if I'm doing a script for you know, an element, let's just pick this one right here, it's about that, control shift and C, and I can uncomment. I can comment it back just by toggling on, on and off, right? And you can put patterns in here uh, to help you build and others build scripts or uh, refactor scripts for doing other things. So great practices are in here, all right? Now I'm gonna reuse the template they gave us and I'm simply going to strip out things that I don't need. I certainly want to reuse this that's in here. I don't need all of this, so I'll take this out for now. Uh, even the comment, there we go. I don't, I'm not using, reusing this, so I'm gonna strip this out. I'm gonna strip out, so I've got an opening sub, tag. Uh, I don't need the else, I'll build my own if, I, if we're gonna do that, but I certainly want an end sub. So I have a sub and an end sub, 
And then I'm going to want to, whatever I'm going to name this, I'll just copy it and put it at the end. And here we go. This is the basic framework for writing a VB script, right? And I'm going to use this directive because I want this. And to speed things up, I'm just going to paste in my code as we go through this. So I put in documentation in here and the script name is going to be add new class, right? The other one was just a bit ambiguous. So when I'm doing that, I can come back over here and I can rename this. All right, so we're just gonna hit F2 and paste in the new name that we want. And there we go, we're gonna hit save. And there we go in the tab, we have the proper name. Let's go ahead and add in our subroutine. And normally I like these keywords to be kept. So I'm just gonna do that before my OCD kicks in. Here we go, N sub, cap, there we go, all right? And then I've got the name of my subroutine right here, create new class and copy everything except for the brackets. I don't need the parentheses down on the very end, just like that, all right? So let's see here. I have enough notes in here, pretty good. Let's explain the subroutine. All right, so we have our subroutine, create new class. It could say create new class with tags but this is private, so I'm not worried about it being reused anywhere else. So the first thing I do, I wanna set my variables. So in VB, it's dim, and then we wanna make sure that we're using the proper APIs, package structure. So current package is ea.package, and then new class is an element, tags is a collection, new tag is a tag value, there we go, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to set the current package to the item that we're focused on, right? And we don't have a folder yet to test this, but we will very soon, right? And then we're gonna run through a loop to see, hey, you know, if we don't have a package, don't do anything, right? If so, continue. So we're gonna set the new class and we want the new class to have a name and then uh, it is going to be a class. Rear, as you would say, what's an object, a requirement, or whatever that's available to you from the library, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna collect the class name. So we're gonna use a dialog box to collect the class name. So we're using an input box right here. So class name is going to be whatever is input into that dialog, right? It's gonna check the length and there's nothing in the box it will just end the subroutine, cancel out. We'll, we'll demo that, test that, I should say. <laughs> demo is in, hey, this is gonna work. Then what we wanna do, and the whole reason we're doing this is because we have multiple tag values that we just don't wanna key every time. So we want some defaults, effort, impact, and level of effort, right? This is what project management and governance says, hey, every class element has to have these tag values in them for development and delivery, right? Then we're gonna update the tag, we're gonna update the class, and we're gonna update. This is the same as saying, hey, we're gonna save this to the Sparks database, right? Then we're gonna have a session output showing the output window, and uh, that is just gonna say, hey, the class name was added, all right? And you'll see that here in a moment. And then let's see here, then another message box about ending successfully. Otherwise, I uh, hey, am unable to complete this because there was some sort of error, right? So let's test this code. Let's save it first. The actress is now gone. And let's go over here, add a package, add a diagram so we can test this script. So let's come to model, which is the root folder in this. And let's add a package. And we're just gonna call this Demo only, it could be tests, whatever you're doing to test your scripts. And we're gonna create a diagram of the same name. There we go, it's gonna be a class diagram, why not, huh? And then we're gonna open it, All right? So we have a blank diagram for this package to execute. So there's two ways to run this script. One, you could run it right from here, as long as you're focused on the package, the area that you, mainly the package, where you want the class element to be deployed. And the other one is to right click on the package. You will see specialize. If there's scripts available, 
It will say specialize in the drop down, scripts, and there's our script. Let's go ahead and select it, right? As soon as we select it, we get a dialog box that we had programmed in. And this is to enter the class name. And let's just call it CRM, keep it simple and hit okay, right? As soon as we do this, we get a dialog box because we told it to, it pops up, hey, it's okay. Let's look at output. So when we go to output, let me clear, I should have cleared this first, completely blank for testing. Let's run the script from this side. So we have a, uh, a class element we created for CRM. Let's go ahead and drop, drop, drop it in. This time, let's just select on the diagram anywhere in the package here. Let's right click, let's run this script. As soon as we run it, it's popping up in my other monitor. As soon as we run it, let's call this one chat, right? And there we go, it added chat. Here we go, chat. And then let's look at output. So it just, we just told it to simply say chat added. Remember when you look at the code? Hey, tell us in the output that this one was chat was a class name added, right? And then here's your message boxes that came at the end. And then you have your input box that was up at the top, right? To collect whatever it is, right? Here's your input box. And it said, enter class name, right? So let's go back over the diagram. Let's drag chat in, right? Now let's do something else. Let's just double click in here, the diagram, go to elements. You've seen this in previous videos. We want to see the tags. Right now it's not checked, everything else is checked. We wanna see the tags, let's hit okay. Well, there's no tag showing, we added the tag elements, but if we go to, there's a couple of ways to do this. We, if you go to properties, let's bring the property window up here on the screen. Let's go to tags. It added the tags, the, the tag names in here for us, right? We select this one. It added the tag names, but I'm not seeing the drop downs. Why is that happening? Well, if I go here to settings, UML types, tag values, I don't have the tag values in here, so it did not populate. So, so far, this test is a failure. So let's import our tag values, settings tab, transfer in the model group, import, we're gonna select the file, it's in our asset repository, tag values, it's in our library here. We're just bringing in tag values. We're gonna import successfully. Let's test this, let's go to UML types, let's go to tag values, there they are, right? So we've got LOE, which we wanted, we have effort and we have impact, all right? So now when I come back over here and I look at these, and I go to tag values, I have the scripts running. So I have make a selection. Let's go ahead and select this one. To make this easy, the impact is going to be development and the level of effort is going to be moderate, right? And then for chat, I wanna bring up the scripts. So this time let's go over to uh, properties. When I'm in properties, let's go to tags. You can do the same thing over here in this window. So either way works. This one's gonna be easy. Matter of fact, this one's not gonna be easy. This group's got some problems. It's gonna be moderate effort. Impact is development. That's our reference here. And the level of effort is going to be difficult, all right? So whatever choices you've built in that are in there, all right? So now you've, very quickly added class elements to your models and you've brought in the tag values so you didn't have to go out and manually enter each one of these for every element. So when you're dealing with very large projects, large block diagrams, models, and you wanna add tag values, stereotypes, or other custom things, Using scripting and automation makes it a lot faster and a lot easier, all right? So as we get into this series, I'm gonna show you how to do some very simple things from building folder structures. Let's say, for example, you're working on a complicated project capabilities. We're going to specialize scripts. We're able to 
very quickly add in packages for cloud. Let's we'll put in a capability package. We have a script here for that. It goes through here. There's an entry box that allows you to, let's say it's capability cap one, two, three, and then login. Whatever the capability is for, you can see it very quickly follows governance processes and practices, gives the packages a name, as well as a diagram that you can use to start building out the solution for a particular capability within that. So we'll get into more of that as we proceed. All right, that's gonna conclude this video. Your homework assignment, if you want to, is to go in to bring up the scripting and create one for every group. I would create a group for each one of these and see how they work for you, all right? I use browser, check out the other ones. You know, if you go into specialize, based on the group, the scripts are gonna show up. If you go into a package or the browser, go to specialize, you have all of these scripts available to you. If you go to a line association or just an element, the different groups give you different automation capability. So play around with that. When we get to this scripting series, you'll be better prepared and ready to go with your questions and concerns. And until the next episode in Model Driven Anything, happy modeling.